Hi, everybody. We're sitting here in the square and we're waiting the arrival. We are awaiting the arrival of Ogmios. Ogmios is coming. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, he's coming. Ogmios is coming. No, no, he's way more zen than that, isn't he? Yeah, Ogmios. Ogmios. Is coming. And Ogmios is somebody that I mentioned on my first bike ride video, is that right? Yeah. Great inspiration for me. He's uh, He was originally, I think, called Ogmios Zen Taxi Driver. No, it's the Zen School of Driving. Zen School of Driving, Zen School of Motoring. He does these amazing videos on YouTube. Check them out. Um, and uh, he just drives around talking about the things he sees, but in a very Zen way. Yes. And he's coming now, and we're going to record a podcast with him. Uh, this is episode 37 of the podcast. Th episode 37 of the Excel podcast. <laughs> We've been... Been away for a while. Can we say why we've been away for a while? Yeah. Why, you, why you've let us down? Well, we spoke about it last episode. I went on tour, so we did acknowledge it. Wasn't just it. that though. You've I, not been well. Uh, yeah, I got a bit ill. Got a bit ill. Um, the strain of working for me. Shut yeah. up. Sorry, boss. Yeah. And maybe I'll talk about my modelling career, which I've undergone since. Uh... <laughs> Your modelling career. Oh, well, we'll talk about that in the car. In the car. Or something later. I don't know, I suddenly lost interest. Oh, anyway, yeah. let's go and meet Ogmios. Okay, let's go meet Ogmios. Let's go. <laughs> He's going to pick us up in his ride. His rock tour. So was he a cab driver? No, no, maybe I made that up. I don't know, we can talk about that with him. Okay. All right, exciting. It is exciting. I'm excited. <laughs> So this video is sponsored by Aries, apparently. A new uh... Aries Rising. It's I've been. Do you want to see my? This is me modelling. Okay, I'll, I'll narrate. Alexi's doing a catwalk kind of strut, and then turning shoulders, walking away with attitude. I just met somebody at a party who owns this um, label, and so she said, "Do you want to come and have your photo taken?" So I said, "Yeah, all right." <laughs> so I have done. <laughs> That's what happened. All yeah. Right. And, uh, but a lot of people, people who are interested in fashion, are like, really impressed. And they gave me some clothes, and I say to me, here he is. Ooh. See, I know what his car is. Here he is. Yes, Ivan. I mean, Ogmios. <laughs> yes, Ogmios. See, I know what your car is, because I've seen your video about it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hey, how are you, hey. Ogmios? Three beardy baldies. I know. All right, are we ready to drive? Yeah, I'm ready. Are you guys ready? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we good? Yeah, we're going. All right, so welcome to episode 37 of the Excel podcast. And I am um, here today. We're in a car. You can hear that. And I am with one of my inspirations from when I started I don't know, thinking about podcasts somebody sent me a link to these uh, incredible uh, videos of a man driving around talking in a very um, quiet way both orally quiet but also philosophically quiet really talking about um, how to drive in a way free from aggression and full of respect and, and compassion. That yeah. man was Ogmios, and he's here with me today. Hello. Hello. <laughs> I uh, feel like right away, I'm, well, I am in one of your videos, aren't I? Because you're recording yeah. this as well. Definitely. It's the it's the kind of multi-dependent ecosystem of podcasting yeah. in that I'm recording you, recording <laughs> me, recording him, and we're all podcasting together. Yeah, and this is, you know, this is going to be fodder for my yeah. next Ambient Drive video. Cool. Uh, is that uh, Ambient Drive, is that different to... Um... Yeah, I've st I'm going to start in a new series called An Ambient Drive With. That's my right. working title. Actually, last week, I had to drive around with another Liverpudlian All right. called Ashley Neal, who's uh, one of the top driving instructors, and he's got <laughs> a big YouTube channel, right. which is really useful. Um, resource for drivers right. yeah so he visited london we had a nice uh, drive around and so, and so uh, these are the first ambient drive nice for me yeah so exciting so do you, well just tell me a bit about how you got started really what your inspiration was and um 
you know, all like that, really. I mean, those are, there was a, like, because there was like, I saw about, I think there was three or four um, videos that you did driving mostly around Acne, Stamford Hill, and then you did a BBC Three series, and then you've, you're back to uh, doing like YouTube videos. Just tell us about what your inspiration was. Yeah, there you go. I suppose go on, really. originally it came out of this car in a way because. Previously, I'd only ever had a car for at most a year at a time. And most of my life I've been cycling about. Right. Um, and I had the odd, you know, banger here and there. And uh, this car just proved to be um, quite reliable. This is, we described this car, so it's, a, it's a black Vauxhall Corsa 1.2 on an 05 plate. That's right. As, yeah. as we say we're just in the business yeah. <laughs> just on the right side five. for uh, you Liz yeah if it was a year older I don't know what I'd do yeah um, but I have to pay because mine because I've got a mighty mighty engine as yeah I've got a three litre diesel which is Euro 5 but not Euro 6 compliant and therefore oh, yeah. every time I leave the house it costs me 15 pounds yeah wow yeah have you paid the congestion charge by the way oh, I will tonight yeah alright so anyway, yeah, go on. Inspiration, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so on the driving side of things, it gave me a chance to get become a better driver, really. And so I started to think about my driving and enjoying the process of, of um, becoming a better driver with, with more practice. And, um, and I was really having... Uh, a nice time and uh, having just feeling really good and and I had the idea because at the same time I was watching a lot of dash cam compilation videos on YouTube uh -huh. which are full of you know madness and, and right. uh, swearing yeah. and and I'd watch them in an educational way really but you know it's also quite interesting uh, and entertaining but it, I wanted to make something that reflected my experience driving around and I'm also into quite relaxing mm. content on YouTube. Right. Um, do you get ASMR? Do I get ASMR? So my girlfriend is, loves it and she gets it and she what shows is me ASMR? the videos and it doesn't affect me. What is ASMR? We need to explain. Can we so explain ASMR, it to Alexi? What, so I think it stands for autonomous <laughs> sensory meridian response. That's right. Which is supposed to be um, a sort of physiological reaction to certain stimuli right so it could be the, someone's voice right and it can create like a tingling sensation for okay. people the people have diff different people have different yep. triggers for it okay we are you're nice to just let them an yeah. out. wow I would have driven past that night <laughs> so quick but I mean what you can see with the the Prius which is probably an uber driver is that it was an uber driver yeah the reason he didn't react straight away is because he's probably on his phone looking at his next yeah. pickup which is one of the patterns you've got to look out for um, but he was I go right here, go up the Caledonian Road so some people get uh, ASMR right to the from trips. like their dentist gives it to them yeah from the way they're really close to your face and yeah, yeah, yeah. gently and, All right. and examining your teeth some people get it from like a hotel reception desk when you're asked questions like how long are you here for? And then they clatter on a keyboard and, and, and yeah. typing your answer. Mm -hmm. Some people get it from their maths teacher looking over their shoulder at their work. Some people get it from watching someone driving and talking very gently. It normally well, involves whispering and stuff. Do you ever get tingles in the back of your neck when you watch stuff like that, Alexi? No, but I, um, I do... Uh, I mean, I certainly responded to Ogmios' uh, soft tones and... Um, but not in tingles. And also, remember, I've been a trained Tai Chi uh, operative, as it were, for many, many years, and I've never got nothing. <laughs> people talk, I've been doing Tai Chi for so long, and people talk about, oh, yeah, I felt this, like, you know, tingling in my head, or <laughs> I could see colours or auras. I fucking never felt nothing. And I'm a good Tai Chi, you know, I mean, you know, I'm going to be... A, Hopefully an assistant instructor. Oh, really? Yeah. But um, you know, I'm very practiced but I actually made 
a Tai Chi comparison with actually the guy that I drove yeah. around with we were talking about. I was saying that I do think of it in in terms of a martial arts now where I'm looking to, to um, gain increasing command and composure over my movements. Right. And uh, in the car, or just in the in car, yeah, 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 in the car, right, yeah, yeah. And um, to be, you know, as they say, mindful, yeah, as you know, much as possible, yeah, and treat it like a practice, uh, yeah. Because I mean, it's inter- I mean, it is. I actually made a, a, a video, a film, a series, two episodes for the BBC years ago called Drive. I've watched it. Are you watching? You I've, seen I've it? I found yeah. them on YouTube. All They're right. amazing. I, I mean, I found three episodes. Oh, was the three? Oh, there's right. one called. Uh, one one was called Speed. Right. One was called Aggression, I think. Right. And one was called Urban Driving. Right. I thought it was ma- amazing. Yeah. And what was amazing was that your bits were really funny, and then they, they sort of interspersed them with these quite harrowing reconstructions. Right. Type, you know, um, crime watch type reconstructions yeah. of accidents. Like, they, I was watching, there's one, I think it may be Urban Driving, where they reconstruct this accident this guy has. Right. He pulls out in front of a van and he's in a bad way. Yeah. And then they have him sort of walking in, in this scrapyard, like dwelling on it and talking yeah. about how his mum felt when she saw him. Yeah. And then cut to you, like, just... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Being and I think you ended that episode by saying, uh, don't be a dickhead, he's off the gas. <laughs> really? But I thought it was brilliant. Yeah. I know yeah, they never really... repeated them. I always thought just as a public service they yeah. never repeated them. Yeah. But I think they did show them when they used to make you go to driving awareness course. I think some of those courses used to show them. Right. And um, so sometimes I think men I've drive... seen an email in that vein. Someone said they watched you in their driving awareness course. Y- yeah. <laughs> so often people were quite aggressive to me because, um, you know, they were. I'd, I'd been part of their... <laughs> having their time as they saw yeah, it wasted yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah so you but how did you get because you earlier you were saying you're a motoring journalist yeah is that how that happened? yeah yeah I think well it was all started because I'd had you know in the 80s I had this hit called Hello John Got New Motor oh yeah but I also oh, it's also because I, I was so apart from that, which is I'm also always been interested in cars and, and, and the idea of driving. But also I um, I did this documentary called for Arena documentary, but I sort of hosted it, which was called The Secret Life of the Four Cortina, which oh. is the most watched video ever really. Uh, not video not video documentary. And it was in a it was it was at a time, it was like 1982 or something, it was at a time before documentaries were always about like Sibelius or, you know, the music, yeah. you know, there was never, but this was the first arena were really interesting as documentary makers in that, that they made uh, documentaries about um, popular culture in a mm-hmm. time when, I mean, there's too much of that now, but in those days it was completely unheard of. And their two famous documentaries from the early 80s are My Way, which is all about the song My Way, and The Secret Secret Life of the Four Cortina, which was, I say, I think it is the most watched documentary ever in the history of the world. And I would always say things like that. Um, But but, uh, I think from that, people, I was offered a column in a magazine called Car, Mm. which was a very upmarket, very glossy magazine. magazine about? Car, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, a, a kind of funny column, and from there, I did that for a few years, and then I went to the Independent, I think, and because they had a motoring supplement, and then I went to the um, Telegraph. Ultimately, hosted a couple of uh, episodes of Top Gear. Oh, really? Yeah, back in there, when it was really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and um, yeah, so yeah, that was that was sort of how I got into that. Yeah, obviously there is an. an he was taking the pick. Anything? I mean, yeah, you did yeah. stop for him, but he was a bit. Like, I could anticipate that. Yeah, yeah, you could see he was about to do it. But how long have you been driving? Obviously? I've been driving about twenty years. Oh. Um, but as I said, really on and off until the last five or six years. Uh, with this car. this car, yeah, and so that's when I've been able to start thinking about my driving. And um, yeah, as I was saying before, I was into. I don't get ASMR in that sense either, no. but I enjoy relaxing content 
watching mudlarkers on YouTube and right. searching through rivers or or now I'm into this guy who is a bin a bin diver. Wow. And he goes around industrial places looking for scrap metal. And right. It's amazing what these companies are throwing out. Yeah. Um, but I find it quite relaxing. And so bringing those two together, I want to make a relaxing dash cam journey, which could reflect my experience a bit. And so I was collecting, because I don't actually drive that often. Right. Um, just, you know, just a trip, uh, maybe a couple of times a week, two, three times a week. And yeah. So it took me a few months to collect enough clips that I thought, oh, those, those are quite interesting. Yeah. And then I started to put them together with music I'd found and, and adding the, the observations and voiceover. Right. So you didn't make that music? No. And you were never an Uber driver? Never. <laughs> we were speculating about this. Yeah. Was it called originally the Zen, Zen Taxi Driver? No, it's, it's no we, I made that. School of Zen Motoring. Me yeah, School of Zen Yeah, because motoring. someone yeah. sent me a link where you, you mentioned it on yeah. Richard Herring, which yeah. I was like, yeah, I was really happy about. <laughs> um, but yeah, people do ask me if I'm an Uber driver. But, uh, yeah, because originally, well, the persona was mysterious, so it could have been, yeah. I thought, especially with Ogmios, which I know is a, a nom de guerre, but, um, you know, you thought you could have you could have been like some kind of Greek yeah. uh, <laughs> Uber driver, you yeah. know, just yeah. kind of recording their reflections. I always yeah. presumed you were filming your Uber trips, basically, and then in post narrating over them. I just yeah. assumed that, I suppose. Yeah, because, like, who else would have so much dash cam footage it's it's saved and uh, yeah. but for me yeah I got the dash cam to create art you know right it was uh, I've never had to use it for any other reason right but I mean so driving is I mean what was very incisive about what you were doing is that the driving well I mean it, it embodies all kinds of ideas I mean Randy Descartes of course said that the motor car is the equivalent of, uh, is our equivalent of medieval cathedral in that it it embodies not necessarily this uh, this of course, <laughs> of course, but I mean, you know, it embodies, it embodies everything about our technology. It's at the, you know, and also we treat it, with, you know, it's revered in the way that, mm. you know, religion was a kind of central tent pole of a kind of medieval life and all that. But also, I mean, it is, it's a social thing that we do, isn't it? Mm. And we, we all, we all have to kind of choose a place. Like I was thinking, it was interesting. I thought. Um, well, about, I've, come, I've been I've been at an all day kung fu camp, and um, I was coming back from uh, uh, we were stuck in a, in the Blackwall Tunnel, and there's clearly a lane where anybody who comes up the outside lane and then cuts in is being a, you know is 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 being rude really because it's not because you break it you know you're not you're not supposed to do that they go up the hard shoulder and then cut in. Well, interesting, I thought it was interesting because most people it seemed to me said to themselves. I personally will not do this. I will not be a kind of scallywag and come up the outside in my black Range mm -hmm. Rover. But on the other hand, when somebody does that, I will let them in. Yeah. Because I was all a bit like, well, fuck them, I'm going to get, like, tight up close to the car in front. Yeah. And not let them in. Yeah. Because they're, they're betraying the norms of, of, of social kind of etiquette aren't they because they're definitely gaining an advantage that I've sat there for 10 minutes <laughs> they've like yeah. come up the outside lane yeah. illegally uh, but I thought it was interesting that most people didn't have my attitude really and said were kind of very accepting of that that they mm. weren't going to transgress themselves but on the other hand were kind of lenient towards those that did I don't know which is probably something Jesus would have said wouldn't he yeah <laughs> <laughs> I don't, but it, I mean so it, it, I mean it, it's a it's a really intimate form of social interaction that we do when we drive, isn't it? And it's also, you know, it also it's, you know, you can kill somebody as well. You know. So anyway, I don't it's, know. yes, it's quite high stakes. Yeah. Um, but as you're talking about the merging, is it? There is, um, there are situations like on motorways where one lane is you're going from going down to one or two lanes. Yeah. Where everyone queues early. Yeah. And then people go up another lane which they're entitled to do and, and really you should be using all space but right. it still feels wrong and yeah. people will come out to block them yeah. but if everyone was using all available space it would be more efficient Right. Uh, but it's going to take time for that message to filter through I think to, Yeah. Mm. But I think it's, it's trying to think about the overall flow and not just your own movements if you think of yourself as one cog in, in a machine that, that needs to have um, you know 
it's gases escape here and there and we need to allow blockages to unblock. And, right. And you can play your part in that. I enjoy, you know, being able to um, help in situations. And, have you inspired a lot of people said to you, you know, you've, you've really made me a better driver? So. Yeah, I do get a lot of messages. Yeah, I bet. People say they hear my voice in their head. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it also actually make it's also, that's the thing about if we had like, I think one of the, I often, this is jumping rails a bit, but I often think about being as like a socialist Mm. And there's often like a kind of gloomy message that you say, well, children are starving everywhere and we must do something about that. But if you also say, if you lived in a world of fairness and equality, it would make you feel better. Mm. And it's the point about if you become a better driver and are more compassionate and let people in and all that, it actually makes you happier, doesn't it? 100%. Yeah. 100%. And I just think it's such an interesting... Uh, platform to to learn about social interactions and yourself and the way you and the way you see yourself as part of society and um, a lot of people I think compartmentalize their behavior when driving so people say oh you know I'm a nice person but behind the wheel yeah like like people can compartmentalize how they behave when they're drunk or this but at the end of the day it says something about you um, it might be that you know all your anger has been pushed out when you're driving and that's been become your outlet um, but it's, it's a, you can't excuse it, and uh, it's still part of how you're carrying yourself in the world. Yeah. And um, I'm a. I also, you know, because I love to see cooperation. So much great cooperation. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah. I think one of the most beautiful things in the world is when an ambulance comes up and people mm. pull over. It actually yeah. makes me want to cry. That. Oh, it's amazing. Because you think that is the yeah. most beautiful expression yeah. of humanity, really. Mm. You know. And in my last episode. Uh, there's a bit where, on YouTube, there's a bit where an old lady sort of wandered out with a Zimmer frame and um, these guys are walking past, help her and come out into the road and stop the traffic. Yeah. And everyone sits there beautifully, patiently, which they wouldn't do for anyone else. Right. But when faced with a real vivid example of, of our sort of fragility in life, we can do that. It shows we can do that, but we don't treat everyone like that, which is a shame. Yeah. We are, see this... Uh See, there, I've got, I've got double wave and then yeah. it thumbs up. <laughs> but he was, that Nissan Leaf was taking the piss because he came up the left-hand turn lane and has pulled oh, in. I see, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Well, you it's know, a bit you of give let, and take, isn't it? Yeah. London, it's all... It's all uh, yeah. I, that's why I love London driving as well. It's like, I think London, like drivers in London yeah. are the best in the yeah, world. I, I, I agree. I, I, yeah. Yeah, I, I enjoy it. I thought that was really profound, what you said about driving being a really intimate social interaction. Yeah. Because through our like actions with these big bulky hunks of metal, we are triggering reactions in people's minds, like mm. in their in the frontal lobe of their brains, like instant reactions that tiny movements that make yeah. a big difference. They they do. It's mad. And even if we, it's not a situation where you're getting that wave or uh, an explicit sign of gratitude, pe me giving this guy space is telling him something. And uh, if I was right up behind him, that's telling him something else. Yeah. And so all of our actions and, and our, our sort of body language of our cars and how we behave is filtering into the overall um, societal experience. So uh, I like, that's why I guess I, I do like to think about the details as well and uh, enjoy the, the subtleties of, of, um, of, of driving and the dynamics of of cooperation or not cooperating. How do you feel though when you see people transgress? I'm much better. I used to. I wrote a short story about a bloke who used to drive up the motorway, and then one day, it, it, this was true. I was with my tour manager, and we were just driving up the motorway, and I was really happy. And then my tour manager, there's a bloke in the middle lane, lane two, yeah. as we call it. He got up right behind him and started hooting, and. I said, why are you doing that? And he said, because he shouldn't be in there. He should be in lane one. Yeah, yeah. He shouldn't hog the middle lane. And from that moment on, I never enjoyed a, a, a drive on the motorway ever again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was suddenly filled with rage as well. Yeah. For those people in the middle lane. How do, how do you... And I'm better about it now. I have learned in the last few years. But Because it is... I mean, it is an injustice in a sense, isn't it? It is selfishness. How do you feel yeah. about them? Do you take a kind of Jesus-like... I, I I would like to, I guess part of what I do is 
having some kind of public accountability for certain ways of driving and, right. and in my own jokey way putting them on blast as people say you know just and just showing this is mad or this is great you know um, but as with anything it's, it's uh, recognizing something without trying without allowing too much of your inner anger right to to be the vessel for that yeah, um, yeah. but there's certainly things yeah I mean gradually over time I'm still learning all the time and yeah I still things that will be like there's I was talking to uh, the instru driving instructor guy about uh, he what he calls a beep when you beep at someone when you've done something wrong calls it a telling off beep yeah whereas the beep is meant to be for um, you know warning about danger right but there is you know and it, we're talking about this and there is in some sense a place for a telling off beep if you see something beyond the pale yeah because a lot of drivers otherwise are going through their driving life um, with just silent compliance around them well that's what their, you see that's what I, I think this is justifying my rage sometimes but I <laughs> do sometimes say to Linda which is why I'm saying I'm making them up by screaming at them that's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. getting out the car and attacking their yeah. their vehicle with a baseball bat I am Educating them, I didn't yeah. do that. Well, but I mean, yeah. Educating yeah, them yeah, in, yeah. in driving, so yeah. So he thinks there is a place for the talent not being busy. Uh, yeah. yeah, and um, <laughs> <laughs> but you do it at your own risk because, as I say, there's there's part-time nutters, and we can all be part-time nutters, but yeah. there's actual nutters as well who would love an opportunity to engage in some yeah. real road yeah. rage and reckless. So you have to you have to weigh it up to a degree yeah. and say, is this the hill you're going to die on or yeah. uh, well that's I always sometimes want, I always felt like people I don't know it varied really but often in the United States people would drive quite well really because there was always the underlying thought that <laughs> yeah. somebody if you, you cut you. somebody else yeah. off they would they would, they would shoot yeah. could shoot you so you could say that one one um, you know one way of achieving good road discipline would be to arm everybody oh yeah. Jesus I was waiting well, I'm just saying. to see when weird guns would come I'm up. I'm just saying. I thought earlier when you mentioned that cars are the modern day cathedral, you were going to say, and guns as well. But no, 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 they're not, no. We're we'll waiting until we talk about driving in America. Yeah. But ideally, it's because we don't have easy communication sometimes with that car. Yeah. yeah. Um, but sometimes I've had a situation a, a while back where somebody was streaming down. I could see them in my mirror. They were cutting people up. And then when they caught me, they cut me up as well. But I was trying to turn left. Anyway, they were beeping me and, he, and we had to stop at the lights. Yeah. And he rolled down his window and he's like, oh, we could have made the lights or whatever. And I, and I was just like, I, you know, I just yeah. gave him warmth or whatever. And, he was, and then it turned out he was wanting to get back to watch the Tottenham game. Uh, right. And so uh, we had a little chat. And it's just like, <laughs> when you have the opportunity to communicate, yeah. you say, you know, yeah. oh, you don't need yeah. to drive like a nutter or whatever. It yeah. should be all right. Um, it's, uh, it's just that... We're, we're separated from each other in, yeah. this, in that sense. Yeah. I was yes. talking to him about as well, there's not really, like, let's say if this polo in front did something ridiculous. Yeah. It'd be nice if later I could leave a little review or some kind of message that he or she has to read right. wow. each year. So that, you know, yeah. you get a little, uh, and moderate it so it wouldn't just be abusive. Right. Um, That's a very good idea. Wow. Quite that. Like, yeah, you scan the number plate and you yeah. can leave a review of their driving. Yeah. And maybe it's something you that um, the person receives each year as a printout of like. Well, so if they've been bit, tailgating isn't that people, a bit like snitching yeah. though. Well, that's. I mean, you can you can report to the police. You know, it's quite easy these days to, if you've got dash cam footage, to upload it to, um, you know, the Metropolitan Police website. And there's people who do that regularly. But I think this would wouldn't be snitching in that sense because it's just communication. There's no. There wouldn't be necessarily a sanction behind yeah. it. Yeah. It's Remember more... that left turn you took on Mulberry Road yeah, yeah. on June the 7th? Well, I think you were a bit sharp with it and you cut me off. I'm going to tell you something that happened to me a few days <laughs> ago. Can I just like, should oh, we take yeah. a, a right and go yeah. down here? Because we'll cut back. Yeah. Go past the... Oh, shall we go past this the... Power, yeah, it's bit. overheating. Yeah. So that's why I was filming on my yeah. phone for a while. Anyway, sorry, what I were you saying? saying? I had a funny situation um, yeah. a few days ago. I was uh, going to pick my friend up in Stanford Hill and come to the end of one road which is on up to West Green Road and there was a I was waiting to turn left and there was a, a couple cars and a moped which was signaling left 
Right. And so it was about to, I thought I was about to turn left. So as I started to move out, I realized, you know, at a certain point, it had, it, it just left its it just indicators left it on. Yeah. And I had to stop. So it was a, a false start. It was right. nothing really. I could have maybe, you know, you've got to remember that indicators aren't, aren't the absolute truth and yeah. that can happen. But within about five, ten minutes, by the time I got there, I, had, I realized there was a, a comment on my last YouTube video saying, <laughs> I just saw you pull out in front of a motorcycle on West Green Road at wow. that time. And that was amazing. I was like, yeah. it, and I, I, you know, obviously I, it, was, there, it was done in a nice way as yeah. well. But I, I did initially, I was like, I put my defense in straight away. You know? Right. <laughs> <laughs> but with a knowledge in, yeah, I could have done a bit better there actually. Yeah. But that was for me amazing just to That's have such immediate That's feedback yeah. publicly. Yeah. Of like, yeah. My driver got, yeah, I've got to keep my wits about me now. I don't want to get yeah, cancelled. Now people know yeah. what your face looks like. For a long time, yeah. no one knew what you looked like. That's right, yeah. How does it feel now? <laughs> I don't mind. I'm you know, confident in the sense that I do try and drive like this all the time. So I, I think it'd be unlikely that I'll get some will film me in some mental road rage meltdown. Um, <laughs> so I feel fine about it. It's, it's um, what you can do, yeah, is just, uh, is just do your best and drive around. And, and it, as I said, it's part of my practice. So if, if there is something I can learn and someone can point out, great, I'm, I'm up for that. So I, I want, so the second part of uh, this whole, your, the world of Ogmios in the sense that yeah. is um, forms a, a, a kind of essential part. It is the what you might call the theatre of the street, really. Mm. And it's again, it's a very Brechtian notion. The Brecht talks about how you know the theatre is not just high-minded plays by uh, you know uh, you know some Greek tragedian, but it's also that the theatre happens um, in front of us all the time, you know, people having an argument, a man, you know, knocking over his cart of melons and picking them up, that is all theatre. And that is very much what is amazing about your videos is that, that there's, there's obviously a deliberate choosing, but just the seeing that well, and you are also, where you live, you are also aided by the fact that you live near a lot of Orthodox Jews, mm. which is, I mean, which is, so you've got like that one that you filmed during Purim, you know, where all these, like, these kids are dancing in the street. Uh, I just think it's extraordinary, really. You know? that, that was a real, a real uh, special day. I, my dad lives quite close to this. He lives uh, sort of on the edge of Stanford Hill, Stone Newington. Right. And I, you know, I go and see him regularly, and, and that day it was like Purim. Yeah. Because you never, I never know when Purim's going to be. It changes, doesn't it? Yeah. But I've, having grown up around Stamford Hill, yeah. I know what it is. And so I was like, on the way back, I was like, let me just drive through and uh, enjoy it. And um, just had some brilliant encounters. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, they are great contributors to the theatre of the kind of driving in the streets, I think. Yeah, uh, yeah. Half Sidim, <laughs> you know, there's the beat up, there's the beat up Previa, isn't there? That is the default car. <laughs> it's, it's, it is a silver Toyota Previa people yeah. carrier. Yeah. And they're all dinged up yeah and there's thousands of them yeah it used to be the volvo and i don't yeah. think there was that documentary they even called volvo city really it was like a channel four because that was the default it would be like the default car back then was like yeah a volvo estate navy blue yeah and now it's the silver previa previa yeah because yeah. yeah. you've got a lot of kids so they got a yeah it's functional yeah it? yeah and, and also reliable. they won't they will i think i don't know whether that's still true but uh, my relatives for instance would never buy any German vehicle because yeah. of obvious reasons. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the Volvo became the sort of, you know, for a while the go-to Volvo estate and then, but now the Previa, yeah, yeah, yeah. But just, I mean, I mean, can you talk more about just, I mean, there's just also, there's a running joke, I think, in one of the early ones about the man and the, who, who puts the the aerosol oh, the line pot around pot the hole, whole pothole man, man. Yeah. yeah. I just love the details of, of life. Yeah, and the mundanity and like sometimes the absurdity of it, and thinking about okay, what what does that mean? Like what he's spraying round? Does that mean he will come back later, or you know? And and these sort of heroes of everyday life. Yeah, and, and they that, are. Yeah, they well. Yeah, they are. There's, I mean, there's as much meaning in a sense in that man as yeah. there is in a play by David Mamet. Well, I would mm. actually say a lot more because <laughs> I hate Mamet, but you know, it's. 
Um, and I do love this way of moving through the city. Yeah. And visually, even before I had dash cam, and now I've got a dash cam, I'm like a mini director. Right. Not that I can veer my car off and get a better shot, but um, I am thinking about this. This is a beautiful scene. Yeah. It's framed, it's, you know. It's, yeah. Uh, and, uh, and there's that corner where there's always a man unloading something dodgy from yeah, the back. Yeah. <laughs> the white coat man. Yeah, the white coat man. Yeah, yeah. It's just the griminess of it. Like, they'll be out the back, hanging out the back of this van with all these carcasses, um, with some kind of rusty trolley they picked, you know, <laughs> stolen from Morrison's, <laughs> and just lobbing them into and then yeah. pushing it along. It's just, it's a beautiful scene for me. I just, it's yeah. so uh, visceral. Yeah. Um, and I'm a big, yeah, people watcher as well. And, just uh, I, I really enjoy that aspect as you say the theatre yeah yeah that sounded so like it one of your videos when I mean, you said the theatre yeah <laughs> did you I had the when you went to work for for I sort of assumed although I might be wrong that when you went to work for BBC three that they didn't really understand what was best about you and didn't I haven't watched the shows that you did, but... You haven't watched them? No. So, I I'm not wrong. <laughs> was that a different experience? Yeah. I mean, it's a huge learning experience. Yeah. I'm happy with the way it came out. I'm really happy with it. But I had to get it there, dragging... You know, I had to drag it there. Yeah. Kicking and screaming. See, I've had 40, over 40 imagine, years yeah. of, of dealing with, you know... And I was sort of went into it, kind of aware that a lot of people do end up having quite a negative experience being drawn into TV, especially out of something that's on YouTube yeah. or whatever. So I did go in it with my eyes open, but at the same time, I still got dragged through the hedge backwards. <laughs> and, um, and a lot of things were, yeah, a bit, a bit um, yeah, I mean, askew, but I mean, I can't go into it all. Uh, right, fair enough. But yeah. I can say that, um, <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> yeah. I, it's I'm a, happy it's a, that I, you know, had what was amazing. I got to do things like Benjamin Zephaniah was right. was in the final episode, and I should watch it really. I'm watch sorry. it because yeah. at, the, at its core, it's, it's still yeah. Ogmiel School as their motor, in, right? And it has like, but it has um, a fictional thread, which was actually my idea because I wanted to have it separate from. I didn't want it just to be a reproduction because I, I wanted to still own what I do on YouTube, right? And so it has a fictional thread of my life, which essentially my issues with this car, uh, battle rap, because I used to be, you know, used to be involved yeah. in battle rap, and um, other things that play over the six episodes. So there's some stuff outside the car, but at, a, at its core, a lot of it is still just pure dash cam observation. Right. And, and so I think you'll still enjoy it, yeah. Yeah, I should do it. It's, it's remiss of me not to have watched it. Really. Sorry, sorry. Just made that, built up this whole story about There's, an, there's a new YouTube episode out just recently, so I right. should check it out. Uh, yeah, it's yeah, called yeah. Uh, Hazard Perception. Okay. So as well. I yeah. think are they all on iPlayer? So. They're on iPlayer. Yeah, they keep sh they do keep showing them on BBC Three at odd times. Oh, do they? Uh, even recently, but BBC Three is such a weird channel as well. It's like yeah. it came back and it's, it's a weird sort of uh, yeah. random assortment of programs. Um, and I think for them maybe it's like 15 minute filler that they can throw in right. uh, here and there. Um, what but, car do you guys think Jesus would have driven? <laughs> it's not like you're reading from an email or something. <laughs> <laughs> he came back today. Mm. Oh, that's such a... Oh. What would he drive? Um, well, he probably wouldn't drive in a way, would he? Mm. Because he'd, he'd have his mate drive him around in a, <laughs> in a van. His mate would have yeah, a van. Yeah. <laughs> a 12-seater. Uh, yeah. yeah, or just like a, a, a beat-up... Yeah. There was a van years ago, I don't know whether you, they did it here, but it was made by Citroen and it was called, was it Peugeot? It was either Peugeot or Citroen, same thing. It was called, it was called like a Peugeot Jumpy. Wow. And I thought that's like a, you know, somebody's drunk too much coffee. A <laughs> Jumpy. He might, he might have drunk, drove a Jumpy. But Jesus, he might have drove a, a Suzuki Mighty Boy. Which we talked boy, about. Giving, like, doing people's favours. Yeah. Putting stuff little, in his pickup. In a pickup, oh, yeah. Oh, you want a hand yeah. moving your television, <laughs> yeah. your fridge, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's what I used to say when, um, because I, I uh, when I was working as a motor engineer, I was close to the people at Citroen. And Citroen were the sponsor, were they, um, no, the, the, the suppliers of vans to Arsenal. 
Football Club, the official sponsor and supplier of Vans. Oh, wow. So if like, you know, Theo Walcott, or, I mean, you know, I can't think, Aaron Ramsdale now would mm. wanted to move some um, uh, sheetrock. <laughs> That sounds, he would, that sounds quite plausible. Really. Yeah, he would. He would go to you know, he would go to Citroen Press Communications. I, I, I need a <laughs> you know, English, Indian, but you know, I don't know. I need a pickup uh, truck, uh, you know, to yeah. to move a load of gravel. They go, yeah, you can lend you that. Um, yeah. Um, what were we talking about? Oh yeah, what Jesus. car would Jesus? Do you have any feelings about that? At this time, he'd, he'd have a humble car, like maybe yeah, much like maybe his you Corsa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or he'd have what yeah. I'm liking the look of these days is as a very humble way of getting around. Is those sort of I see Amazon have got some of them out. They're like little cycling vans. Right. Yeah. He'd, he'd be bopping uh, yeah. around in one of them, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, I was really going to say it yeah. would definitely be Ule's compliant. Yeah. But a bike is even better. Well, yeah. now this is a. I have very. Um, I have, and you, and you talk about it on your cycling video, I have a lot of friends, left-wing friends, you'd say, really, you know, identify, support the Palestinian people, anti-imperialist, they fucking hate LTNs. <laughs> yeah. They can't, their socialism stops mm -hmm. at LTNs, which, for those it, of you who don't know, is low traffic now. Yeah, and when I did that, that's episode six. Yeah, the cycling one, yeah. I went and infiltrated that's protests. That's right, but brilliant. When, oh, right. When I went to, I they had met up in Downhills Park, and yeah. at the gate of Downhill's Park was someone handing out leaflets. I presumed it was part of the protest, but when I looked at it later, it was a Socialist Worker Party leaflet. Right. And their take on it was very balanced in that sense, because I think right. they recognise a bit that it is affecting working class people right. um, in the area. And so they didn't want to be just another... You know, right, OK, of, it's uh, quite interesting, class, yeah. Uh, Oh, we love it. And there's a guard. There's an article in the fucking Guardian every week yeah. saying uh, LTNs are great. LTNs save lives, which I suspect is, you know, bourgeois. You know, it's like it's like, you know. Yeah, I don't have a Germany. strong, yeah. very strong opinion on it. I, I'm in an LTN zone now, and right. it is nice that it's quieter. But I'm, I've got the luxury that I don't have to drive at peak times. Yeah. Because a lot of the traffic is pushed to Green Lanes or Seven Sisters mm. Main Road. I think it's just a shame that um, society hasn't got the infrastructure yet to support people in other, really, you know, in other ways. So yeah, you know, it's, it's yeah. not a coherent strategy. It's piecemeal, council by council. Yeah. Um, but also, you do give that there's an article in the Guardian say how great it is. You know that that means that these things benefit middle class people. Because it wouldn't, yeah. It wouldn't be in there if it benefits. And what's crazy now is that councils are reliant on the fines now that are coming from. Yes. Yeah. Like, yeah. is using that money to, because you know obviously they're underfunded, but it's just, you know they shouldn't have to be relying on money well, from people transgressing. This is how it affected me because I, when I moved to my new flat. I, I had a meeting at the estate agents, and the estate agents is in, a, is in Dulwich, yeah. very up up market, wealthy area, in an LTN, and I got a fine yeah. for going to my appointment and parking the car and and driving in a on the LTN road where the news where the estate agent was, and I the fine was it broke my budget for the month, you know, it just mm. completely yeah. Yeah. left me. It is tricky to get around sometimes, yeah. Why are you moderating your fucking language on this I don't know, because around Ogmios, I feel like I should have myself. I feel bad about being, being aggressive in any way at all. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, I should say, this is where we're talking about being a motor engineer. It's one thing that yeah. I did a few times, is it? Because mo this is, there's a couple of roads here with like a ridiculous number of speed bumps. Yeah. So, which are, yeah. are just complete bullshit, I think. Speed it's a shame that we've, yeah. we it's sort of, res we have to resort to speed bumps. Yeah. Because it is, it is. Well, I don't the think they work either, really. Well, look how many children are right now crossing oh, the street. You know so. what I've done? I think you might get a fine for yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, man, I'm sorry. That's all right. Look, look, look how zen I can. Yeah. This is a true test. Yeah, you won't get a fine. You just get a fine. Look, our Patreon we'll, we'll, is paying yeah, your we'll, congestion charge. Yeah. No, it's all right. It's, it's, I'll see if we can stretch. No, nah, no, nah, it's fine. It's, <laughs> you know what? It's Right it, up it, as a tax thing. <laughs> yeah, what, no? It is a... Uh, beautiful thing you know what i mean it's, it's a test it's i don't mind it's i transgressed i will pay it's um 
and it's something for me to reflect because I just went there. Yeah, yeah I mean, really, we um, were distracting you, though, weren't we? Yeah, yeah, it's your fault, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what's the situation you're in? What's the, yeah, this is yeah, what come we on. call smombies. You know, oh, what's the smombies? Smartphone zombies. All oh, right, yeah. So you've got to watch out for them, yeah. the I didn't coin that, obviously. That's yeah. been a while, but it's like... Um, yeah. People are very distracted these days. Oh, uh, 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 if you go take the next so go right, left, right, yeah, yeah. left, sorry, left, yeah, because yeah. yeah, that's going to take you in a bus lane, that'd be even worse. And take the next right, I'll show you the shortest road with the most okay. speed bumps in it that nice. there is in the entire world. <laughs> this one, yeah, yeah this one, okay. here, yeah. So, this is what, like, maybe 200, you know, 300 meters long road. So, you couldn't get up above 20 miles an hour, even if you yeah. tried, really. One speed bump. And then second speed bump, and then there's a sort of rise at the end of the road. Yeah, it's it's yeah, who's it's a powerful speed, speed bump lobby. Labour friends of speed bumps <laughs> is a is a, <laughs> they're a powerful group. <laughs> Which way are we going? Uh, left. Left. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to say was yeah. this is kind of accident. Being a, a motoring journalist, that I have a couple of times been out with the police. Hmm. Motoring police, and that is an amazing parallel universe that you really? live in. Yeah, because nobody speeds. <laughs> no, everybody is amazingly courteous. They pull lane, you know, lane one, lane two. It's a, it's a, it's a world that we should all live in. In a way, yeah, we should all live in a world where we're all in a marked police car, or next to one. Or next, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's uh, an amazing. And I, see, here we go. Oh, that's special branch, or wow. that's just cops. I don't know. They were going pretty fast. Yeah. Um, uh, what was I going to say? In fact, I was out with the chief inspector once, and I just said I was a bloke there with a, he's your know, one working brake light. You know what? Would yeah. you normally? And he, he pulled him over and took. <laughs> So I, it also gave me this tremendous, like, I said, why did you do that? He said, well, you were in, you know. You put him on I the thought, spot. I put him to. on the yeah, spot, yeah, he had yeah. to. <laughs> and because uh, I was just writing an article about how I, Wickham Police, um, were thinking of using all electric cars, and this was good, that's good for 12, yeah. 15 years ago. But I just, I got this bloke fucking <laughs> talked to by a chief inspector. <laughs> Just, I thought this is the power that you yeah, have. Yeah, yeah. This is the <laughs> intoxicating power of the police or being in a police car. I thought, fuck, I'd like to abuse this <laughs> so much. I had, a, I had a shout out as well from early on from on Twitter from uh, Nigel Planer. Oh, right. I was very okay. happy about yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, Nigel. Yeah. <laughs> I love Neil. Like, he was a big, uh, <laughs> you know, I, like young ones I, I yeah. really loved. and. And he was, he was probably my favourite character. <laughs> That's all right. I don't mind. Uh, you're a close second, close second. <laughs> We're not one of them people. You know what, actually, yeah. um, my mum and dad, in 1980, when my mum was pregnant with me, she... Uh, oh, right now. Ran here. Yeah. We'll they, back to they saw you at the Pegasus. Right. Near Newington Green, Green Lanes. All oh, right. And... Um, my mum's, which rest her soul, she would always, always say, I, afterwards I told him he was going to be big. Yeah. I mean, he might have already been big. Yeah, my dad no, said it was a no. small gig, though, but it was really yeah, funny. Yeah, a tiny little pub, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. But, yeah, so I was there early. I was an early uh, oh, thank you. fetal fan. Yeah. Do you make a living at this? I mean, what's the... I mean, I've <coughs> been doing creative freelance for two years. My last job was... I was working in a pupil referral unit in, in Dalston, and that was two, which way are we going? Straight on? Straight, straight. Uh, two years ago, and the BBC thing, I had to fully focus on that, so it gave me the impetus to, to try and do that. So I'm trying to do this full time, um, yeah. trying to be a good YouTuber. And then and, left, uh, left, left. Uh, right, 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 sorry, sorry, right, right, right. And um, I think, yeah, now I'm too far gone, I don't even, I, would, I wouldn't want to go back to a normal job. <laughs> I just love this creative lifestyle. So you weren't doing that before you you had a before I've then. always had a job, if, even if part time. Yeah. I've always tried to do creative stuff on part in a part time yeah. way, whether it's music or making videos or, or whatever. But this isn't the first time I've gone. Uh, and it's tricky, you know. I don't know if I'll ever have somewhere secure to live in, like in London. 
really. It's, it's, you know, it's hard. It's, uh, left, 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 it's, left, it's yeah. a trap, isn't it? It's yeah, if you notice, I've dropped into what this is what the police do. Is sort of there and giving instructions. They always say, left, 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 right, 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 straight, straight, yeah, straight. Yeah. So I've, <laughs> I've actually dropped into uh, doing it. So next junction, left, left, left. I'm in the same boat as you. It's so hard. It's it's amazing and liberating being freelance artist, but it's scary. And I, mm. I can't Im ever imagine owning a place in London. Yeah. London. And this is where crazy, I grew yeah. up. It's not fair, you know? It's nuts. My parents bought their house for so cheap. Mm. And they're like, when are you going to buy a house? And I'm like, wait, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but you just accept that, really, that that's the price. Um, I mean, you're, you're free. I mean, the, the, the thing about, the only way to be, I suppose there were other ways, but one of the, if you were came up in my generation, then you had to, and that's what I was talking about, I've been dealing with, I've been dealing with a large corporation for, you know, 40 odd years and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. That is, but that was the only way, in a sense, to be, to be an artist, was to be, write for a paper, you know, um, and then you had to work around all those, you know, all that systemic stuff, really. Yeah. I mean, I, there must be something, I, I don't know. I feel like YouTube is an opportunity for me now. If I build up my YouTube channel to make it sustainable, it's not yet, because I don't put out many videos, but like stuff like this ASMR drive, regular drives, I want to put more content out and uh, get some free stuff as well. I'm getting an electric bike sent to me. Oh, oh yeah, so I'm, I'm unlocking some of the YouTube benefits now. Oh, I like some of that shit. I'd like another yeah. shit. Yeah, they'd send forever. Anyone. Yeah, I'd, I'll, I'll, I'll give you the link oh, to please. the company. So you've, but you've done a cycling one or two already. I mean, I included some cycling in in an episode. That was just a conventional bike. Yeah, yeah. so that's my my. Bike. I mean, that was amazing when you went to the LTN and the day it had been introduced and yeah. you filmed yeah. the confusion. I mean, that was again, that was yeah. just such powerful. Theatre of the street, really. You know, I thought it was extraordinary. But it has to, it has to be. I mean, it's also, although it's the theatre of the street, it doesn't just happen. It, it has to have your viewpoint, your artistic choices overlaid on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the sort of meta yeah. analysis of it. Um, but I, I was really, yeah, I was just sitting back and just enjoying it. It was amazing, and I loved the sort of people who come along and try and warn like the you know <laughs> yeah. self-appointed LTN wardens. <laughs> Um, and then, you know, people just shouting at each other, you know, as if it's some kind of sinkhole or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and the truth is that I think the council will run in an amnesty anyway. They weren't going right. to, um, but people don't know that. Yeah. And, um, I didn't really know that at the time fully, but, I, um, yeah, they, they, uh, now, now it's, you know, deadly quiet there, but on the first days when people get used to yeah. what's going on, or some of the tactics, like the, mo some mopeds would get off and, push through the middle yeah or they get on a pavement and, and ride like I, I can't imagine that's one way to get around it if you're still driving your moped just because it's on the pavement you yeah, yeah. become invisible <laughs> um but yeah it's subject to regular vandalism i think and people moving the camera to the point really? of the sky uh resistance but yeah it's a it's an odd sort of uh group alliance i think the anti-ltn uh protest that i went to there is a bit of a there's yeah, a little bit of overall over conspiracy the, yeah, yeah. vibes, um, uh, and uh, it's hard to know. Yeah, what, what? Uh, it's not all what one type of people yeah. are really against it. But um, as I said, I don't really ever. I'll just go with it. Whatever. Trying to. It's not affecting me too much. Ognos, thank you very much. That's oh, thank been you. amazing. Oh, thank you so much. It's so much to talk about. I think. Yeah. Really. You you make you make the world a better place. Oh, I appreciate that. <laughs> you appreciate actually that. do, yeah. Yeah, well, you actually do. Like Jeremy Corbyn tried to, <laughs> but they stopped him. And in fact, in a sense, yeah. you could say that Jeremy they made a the, Jeremy in a sense Jeremy's rise made the world a worse place because they were forced into action to, yeah, you know, well, it kind to of blunted a lot of the yeah of what of potential movement yeah or, yeah and it brought some vile people out of the woodwork oh yeah. and now and like in power. charge yeah. and gave them power so jeremy you could say jeremy has made the world the worst place we no you, fault jeremy. of his own <laughs> we do love it but you've undoubtedly yeah. made the world a better well, place. well thank you i appreciate it and that's maybe a reason why i should continue on a spiritual revolution even though i am you know i'd like to see things change but 
there's le people can be less uh, they're less aware when people are pushing them or <laughs> conscious raising right sort of agenda and they'll leave you alone to a degree but um i appreciate that um Oh, it's the yeah. truth. We only speak yeah. the truth on this. Yeah. No, I love I love the show. I'm I'm a big fan as well. Thank you. I, yeah. I enjoyed your Jeremy Corbyn. Yeah, no, it was, it was interesting. Yeah, it was interesting. I think he's so reasonable to the point where he his unreasonableness is is in staying in the Labour Party <laughs> yeah. to a degree. It's like it's his blind spot of reasonableness. Yeah, and I think you sort of really probed him a bit on that, which is a interesting. Bit, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. I enjoy your shows, and um, thank you. I really appreciate you having me. And one time, I'd like to. I'd like to see how you are at driving. All right, yeah. And uh, maybe I could come and be the yeah. hear some of our voice in your head as you drive. Yeah. What are you like as a driver? I'm not bad. I'm not okay. bad because I took on board um, those uh, lessons. The thing that I've got really bad at because I've been doing a lot of cycling is I've got and I've just got a I've just got either a fine or points on my license for going through red exactly. lights. Okay. It's the same day I was on my way to the all day kung fu workshop uh, <laughs> in Kent yeah. and I was terrified of running late because the teacher goes mad bit, yeah. so I went through a red light in Lewisham that's what happens isn't it but it's, it's an opportunity for reflection and, mm. um, and it is a martial yeah. art it is a martial art it's, it's uh, martial art of driving it's yeah. the power of the mind yeah and can we my friend likes to use the term Zan Shin which is he does Aikido All right. and it's like having that presence of mind through the whole of your actions and sometimes when we lose a Zen Shin, we trip on the pavement or we do this or that. It's, yeah. It's how can we cultivate that like state of mind? Like what said, make it exceptional, right? Did he? That poem you read. What poem? Oh. <laughs> you picked it. Did I? <laughs> what was it about? Everything you do, do it with art. Oh, all right. With care, yeah. make it exceptional. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's infusing the everyday with the sacred and... and uh, and you'll see the benefits. Yeah. And, and society will as well for your... Be proud of what you that. do, whether it's yeah. mundane or, mm. or professional work, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't remember doing that, saying that, but yeah, that sounds <laughs> fair enough. But it's also, I, 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 I want, you know, I do think, because obviously growing up in Marxist and growing up in very conventional, in a sense, politics, that if there isn't, if only you could find some way to involve what we've been talking about, particularly what you've been talking about mm. in how we run our lives in a collective I, yeah. sense, then we would be on the road to true justice and equality. Definitely, yeah. definitely. I think, I like to think of things in the design sense as well, mm. how we design our society. Um, do you know uh, Stafford Beer? Not, no. He was like this uh, uh, cybernetics guy from back in the day and, and he, was, he was a socialist as well. And he was really uh, thinking about systems and how we design uh, organizations etc to work in the best way and he he was actually involved in he went to Chile and under their socialist right, they got him out there yeah to, to <laughs> yeah well, to, there, there you go. I mean just to jump ahead a bit people yeah. not spoiler alert they killed him yeah the CIA yeah but in b before then yeah go on so they set up this thing cyber sin which right. was he had using his his ideas viable system model to uh, still have autonomy within the different factories and right. etc but have amazing communication and uh it was really you know ahead of its time and was working well but then the CIA yeah, yeah, killed and then he yeah. had to leave but yeah. i often think there's a lack of the design element to how we think politically mm. yeah and people could understand more i think if you say this is the we should do things like this in this carefully designed way because we're way off where we should be. Yeah, absolutely. As a society, yeah. and and, pe and uh, we have to battle all the status quo. People who are like we've never had it so good. I just shut up. Yeah, it's pathetic. There's a lack of imagination from people, and and uh, but yeah, you know, I'm down. I'm down. Yeah. yeah. There's also a great photo of Allende when they attacked his um, the <coughs> presidential palace. It's his last photo, I think, of him alive. And I just thought, for a socialist, it's a great way to go out if you got to go out. Is the the right wing, the the army is attacking his, and he's got. I think I might have got this wrong, but he's got. I think he's got like a World War Two German helmet on because they got the equipment from Germany during yeah. the war, and he's got a bandolier of bullets around his, yeah. you know, like that. And I think he may have some kind of machine gun. I'm not mm. sure. I just think, well, if you're gonna go out as a socialist, then no, like it's not a bad way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. in a hail of bullets. Yeah, yeah. with an M60. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. It's heavy shit. Yeah, so that's a, check out that photo of Allende. Oh, yeah. It's uh, heroic.
doomed and heroic. But yeah, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, I agree with you. Oh, sorry, I went off on a tangent there. But yeah, <laughs> uh, I agree. It's not... If only we could find a way to sneakily do what you're talking about without the without the the, the, the money addicts noticing. Yeah, and there, there are the tools, I think, with yeah. sort of crowdsourcing. Something I think about the roads a lot is they have, for example, this fix my pothole thing online, or but it's not really, people aren't really engaging with it enough. Uh, and often see a junction that, uh, that is really difficult to work out for anybody, but there's no real system yeah. where people can, yeah. can, can express that and then engineers will yeah. come and look and work it out we're, we're so far where we could be yeah, as, we as, are. as cooperative very true. communities. Is it? And you, you mentioned there. once that um, there's like one street in London that has like anarchic road rules or something? What was no, that? There's, um, there was a movement in Holland which may still be going on called, I've forgotten what it's called now. And so Kensington and Chelsea, which is a very right-wing council anyway, generally speaking, um, the exhibition road and the area around the Science Museum and the V&A, that has no... They took away all the street furniture mm. and all the markings, and it's just like, it's one space for everybody, cars, pedestrians, and, you know, no road signs, so no visual pollution. And oh. it, I, I think it really works, but vested interests um, scuppered it, really. Wow, yeah. imagine if that People. was everywhere and everyone yeah. just behaved like they should. Yeah. I think the blind weren't very happy about it. <laughs> I must say, but they may have had a valid point there. The blind mm -hmm. weren't mad. But there is a point where sometimes you, you can over-design things and without taking into account how humans will behave, mm. like humans find what they uh, desire paths or whatever. And, and Like we use the hazard lights to say thank you. Right, yeah. Is, is we're expressing a need there, which is helpful for everybody. Yeah. Um, but it's not something that's been designed in. We've had to find that way. And similar with traffic lights because I think there was a thing in Holland where they they experimented with not using lights here and there and forcing people to actually be yeah. super aware and, and cooperate yeah. with and it other. works I think but because we live in an authoritarian yeah. system they don't like it the yeah. people in charge don't like it I'm going to stop there because yeah, I'm going yeah. to talk <laughs> let's say goodbye but <laughs> Thank yeah, you. we were yeah. going to do a drive in your car but I think we've recorded enough yeah, today, we so can't next, yeah. Time, next time next time that would be amazing I love that in that, in that that's situation oh, yeah that would be amazing that would be amazing let's all say goodbye over here I look terrible that's why I put my tiny piggy little eye thank you August pleasure that was amazing pleasure